Hi, I'm Tom Luchtefeld, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Evidence-Based Toxicology Assignment 2018. Uh, this assignment involves the review of zebrafish articles for systematic review and screening. Um, basically, students are asked to review about 20 articles and to resolve conflicts with other students when those students have, re have reviewed overlapping articles. Uh, so when you come to sysrev.com, uh, you can go to sysrev.com slash p slash 3509 uh, to find this project. Um, you can also use the invite link, which you should have been given. If you weren't given the invite link, you can still join by clicking the invite link in the project description, and that's right here. Uh, once, you've, once you become a member of the project, uh, your name will, uh, will appear under member activity here. And uh, you can see that there are three members right now, Dr. Smirnova, myself, and Jua. And uh, yeah, you can read about the instructions for the assignment right here. So. We download the EBT assignment 2018 PDF, and uh, let's go ahead and open that in another tab. Um, and so you can see Dr. Smirnova talks about this project uh, in depth, and you should definitely read through this entire uh, PDF. It's, I think, only two pages, so not that much reading to do. What we're going to focus on today is just the inclusion and exclusion criteria for these articles. Uh, so, so we want articles that discuss zebrafish that are individual chemical exposures, not mixtures, uh, that have control groups, that discuss growth retardation, and in which one or more of the following outcomes are mentioned, morphology, teratogenicity, major organ malformations, skeletal mus muscular system outcomes, or circular circulatory system outcomes. We want to exclude all the studies which were performed in species other than zebrafish, uh, use genetic variants of, of, of zebrafish, so like knockout animals, we don't want uh, studies of knockout animals. Uh, that are doing mixtures or nanoparticles or plant extracts as a treatment uh, where fewer than three concentrations are used, uh, where the article is actually a secondary ar article, like a review or an editorial. Um, the article only assesses reproductive outcomes or articles that were performed in adult fish only. And so that's sort of the, the you know, fast version of these inclusion and exclusion criteria. You should spend some time thinking about these and making sure you understand them. Um, and it's a good idea just to keep this document open in another tab so you can reference it while you're performing this review. And so coming back over here, uh, once, once you think you understand the review, uh, you can come up to the top of the project and click review. You'll be given an article. This one's about adverse effects of serotonin depletion in developing zebrafish. Um, you know, just, just a gut reaction here. I'm thinking maybe this isn't uh, an include because it's a, maybe not about an exposure. It looks like it's about serotonin depletion, but maybe there is some sort of exposure they're given to the zebrafish to see if it, you know, if it reduces serotonin and then there's one of the outcomes that we're interested in. Um, I'm not going to read through this whole article right now, um, but essentially you would read through the whole thing, see if it fits the inclusion exclusion criteria that we laid out. And then you'll say include. Uh, or exclude, depending on, on whether it fit that inclusion criteria and didn't fit the exclusion criteria. So for adult zebrafish here, we'd, we can hover over it for a moment and we can see, you know, was the study performed in adult zebrafish only? Uh, if it is, then we should be excluding this article because that was one of our exclusion criteria. So let's just pretend it's a no. Uh, were at least three concentrations tested? Maybe that's a yes. Was there a control? Maybe that's a yes as well. Is it about zebrafish? Well, I'm pretty sure that one was a yes. Are we talking about an exposure to individual chemicals? Maybe that was a no, but you know we'd have to actually read through that and, and make sure. Um, is this a knockout? Uh, was this study done on some sort of knockout animal? I don't, I'm not sure, actually. Um, but you should read through the article, and maybe you'd say yes or no. Um, maybe there's hatching or mortality outcomes only. I, I didn't get that impression. And then we would select some of the outcomes uh, from this abstract. Uh, and then we'd say, you know, is this a secondary article? Is it a review, editorial, or whatever? And so once we've completed all of these things, uh, we'd say, okay, does this fit my inclusion and exclusion criteria? Uh, and in our case, I think we'd probably say no, because, uh, um, you know, if, we, if this was actually about a genetic variant, uh, we, we'd, we'd say no. But if it wasn't about a genetic variant, it looks like, uh, it looks like the, the rest of what we put here would be would would match our inclusion and exclusion criteria, um, and so we would change this to include yes. Um, if you're ever not sure, but you've completed some of it, you can just take some notes in here. Um, you know, talk talk to yourself about what you thought the article was, and you can skip the article and, and come back to it later. Um, as you complete this process, you'll see how many articles you finished in the lower left. 
Um, and you can also go back to the overview and you can see how many articles you finished just under member activity. None of us have done any articles uh, on this project yet, so everything's at zero. But as people start reviewing articles, you'll see some bar charts uh, demonstrating you know, how many, how many articles have been reviewed. Once you get to 20, you're done. Uh, then you just have to wait for all of your articles to be double reviewed uh, and, and uh, make sure that you don't have any conflicts with other students who completed this process. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that helps and enjoy reviewing.